Again, let me say good morning. I, I'm glad that, that we've all gathered here today for this really special announcement. You know, Alabama's partnership that we have had uh, over the, uh, the time I've been governor with the Delta, Delta Regional Authority is really important to uh, the people of Alabama. They have really helped me do some special things in this state. Uh, they helped us tremendously on the uh, Golden Dragon. And uh, so they, they really have helped a part of the state that, that really needs help. Uh, you know, the Delta region is one of the most historic parts of our country. And uh, culturally, it's, it's rich. Uh, it has great people, good, hardworking people uh, live in the Delta region. It's, it's a poor area, but uh, these are good people that live there. Now, I'm honored also to uh, be joined today by the DRA uh, Federal Co-Chairman Chris Massengill. Where was Chris again? Oh yeah, right here behind me, okay. That's not good. I, I, I'm glad, <laughs> that's good. Uh, but I, we're glad to have Chris with us today. I've worked closely with him over the years. Uh, you know, there are many projects in Alabama that uh, need to be supported. And, and we all know that obviously, uh, as we've been working on this, that state funds are, are scarce. And that's why DRA a participation and uh, their partnership uh, is so important to us as a state. You know, when state dollars are not enough, DRA has uh, helped us, and they have come up with uh, support on many projects, as I said, across the state. Uh, today, the DRA and other partners, we're investing $11.5 million in the area of our state that needs it the most, and that's our Black Belt area. <coughs> there are great needs. Here's our applause meter when we need one. <laughs> uh, and, and so there's a great need in this part of the state uh, for infrastructure and, and workforce training and workforce development, health care, uh, all the things that are so important to an area like the Delta region. Uh, DRA uh, investments is an integral part in, in helping the improvements and increasing the opportunities uh, for this area. Uh, you know, there, there are a total today of, of nine projects that we're going to talk about that will benefit from investments that we're going to be announcing. The, uh, the nine new investments include a new business incubator, workforce training programs, infrastructure improvements for business locations, and expansions. Uh, these investments uh, are expected to help create or at least retain more than a thousand jobs for local residents and it'll help train about 150 entrepreneurs and business owners in this area. We're proud to have the support that is being given today to finish these projects because of what it will mean to the people uh, in this region. My goal has always been to help create jobs for the people of Alabama, and it's going to continue to be that. Uh, these projects that we're talking about today, supported by the investments of DRA and other partners, will be a much needed boost to Alabama's black belt in the entire state. And I look forward to the completion of these projects and seeing the future, what the future holds for this area. The DRA is an important part of our, uh, the resources for our state uh, as we move forward. And now I want to introduce uh, Chris Bassingale. I've worked closely with him over the years. Uh, he is our, our federal co-chairman of the Delta Regional Authority, and he's going to talk a little bit more about these uh, investments. So, so, Chris, good to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Governor Bentley, thank you so much for your leadership, your partnership, and your engagement with the Delta Regional Authority. The DRA does not work without that participation, involvement, and leadership from the governors. We're a state federal partnership to try to make investments into economic development projects, to try to help create jobs, build communities, and improve lives. And that relationship that we have with your governor is very important. The other part of that is, is that I want to say thank you to the congressional delegation. I know Congresswoman Terry Sewell's office is present with us, and particularly the senators. Uh, they are very important with the resources that we get to make these economic development investments. And I obviously want to make sure we say thank you to them and to that relationship. I also want to say thank you to our local planning and development districts. I see Frank and John Clyde and 
they are our frontline project managers. And we all have a great relationship with all of our planning development districts here in Alabama. They are very important to the success of these projects and how we make those investments. So we, we appreciate that relationship a great deal. One of the things that we do at the Delta Regional Authority is that we make these investments really based on the impact that it has at the local level with the partnership with the state. And we do that trying to think about how does this impact public, basic public infrastructure, transportation, workforce training and education, small business development and entrepreneurship. Well, these projects that we're talking about here today impact those areas. In fact, if you look at the history of DRA, in the 13 cycles that we've been making investments, 130 million into the region as a whole. Eight states, 252 counties and parishes, almost 10 million people make up this footprint. And here in Alabama alone, we've helped bring 40 million into this incredible state to help create more than 4,000 jobs with those investments. This year will certainly be no different. One of the things, though, that we're proud to be a part of is projects that really move forward on that goal of job creation. And these projects do that. These projects that we're talking about today will help strengthen local water and sewer systems, build roads, connect businesses to their customers, train and develop a skilled workforce, invest in businesses that will help grow the local economy. And most importantly, we do that in the projects that show measurable results. Measurable results like helping to create or retain an additional thousand jobs, train 180 entrepreneurs, connect 400 families to good public infrastructure. That's why we're proud to be here with Governor Bentley and Jim Byard at the DECA. Jim Byard is what we refer to as the designee, and every governor in our state gets to appoint a designee that serves at the will of the governor, carries the power of the governor on our board, and is an incredible part of our process. And Governor Bentley, I want to say thank you for Jim and his team and his leadership because they're on the ground. They're in these communities working on behalf of the governor every day. And we appreciate that because they provide that direct input to us. So ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to, to be here today to talk about these projects, to tell you that we have a strong relationship with the great state of Alabama. We believe that these projects help honor our goal of creating jobs, building communities, and improving lives. And so now I'd like to ask Jim Byer, director of a decade, to come up and talk about the project specifically. Thanks, Chris. It is uh, the DRA and, and the, it's a federal and state partnership. Governor Bentley talks about local leadership and state partnership, and that's what we're about at ADECA. Uh, gov the governor talks about that he doesn't create jobs, the state doesn't create jobs, it's the local communities that create jobs. It's the state's, uh, the state's role, and that is partnership. And uh, I appreciate the governor allowing us to have the opportunity to really talk about local leadership and state partnership in, in Alabama's uh, 20 DRA counties. I also I want to remind everyone that it takes a little cash for the federal dollars to come in, and we leverage those federal dollars back into the local communities. So these are not dollars that just come to Alabama. A uh, you know, million dollar investment from the DRA means about $100,000 in state general fund dollars and being that we just concluded the budget we're glad for that but I want to remind everybody that it does take general fund dollars uh, to run uh, a DECA and to leverage those federal dollars into our communities and today is really about those local communities and the, the uh, projects where those federal dollars are leveraged. What we're going to do is very simple. It uh, would be nice for me to tell about the, each of these projects, but we've got a representative from each of these nine projects, and I've asked each of them, uh, when I call them, to come up and just give us a small flavor, about a minute, of, of their project, and, and then to stand up here so that we can, uh, we can uh, get a good photo of the governor and Chris and, and these local communities. First is Mayor Jack Tibbs from Eufaula. He's got an exciting uh, infrastructure project, a hotel project. Mayor? Thank you, Jim. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're excited about our project. We, we're uh, not a large city, and, and it's, it's hard to uh, recruit uh, new, new retail businesses. In this case, this is a Hampton Hotel, and, and they were kind of on the fence, so without some incentive programs to get them there, we probably wouldn't have got them. And uh, 
this grant is a, has played a big part in, in getting them into our city, and it's important to us because of the quality, quality of that business and uh, what it's going to do for, uh, it's going to create jobs, it's going to create, uh, help us with our economic development effort there in Eufaula, uh, and it's also, uh, uh, we're a big tourist town, and uh, people like uh, that brand, it's a Hilton brand, so they like that brand, and uh, we actually uh, uh, have a lot of events where people stay out of our town and come to the event. So, so now they're going to have a nice, nice facility there in Eufaula, and we're excited about it. It's, uh, it's an eight million dollar project, and, and uh, uh, not only is it a, uh, you, you, you've seen this in other, in other uh, cities, when, when a Hampton or, or that type of facility comes in, it's going to draw other other uh, retail uh, uh, restaurants and, and things of that nature. So it's, it's an anchor business. So we're, we're really excited about it. Uh, I want to thank the, the DRA and, and uh, DECA, Jim Byard, Chris, uh, the governor. Uh, it's, it's a very important project for the city of Eufaula and, and, uh, and, and we're mighty excited about it. I also want to, just a quick uh, thing. We, we recently had a, uh, a medical mission uh, there in Eufaula, uh, uh, sponsored by uh, DRA, and uh, it was very successful. Uh, the, it, the military came in, it's a training exercise for them, but uh, we, we reaped the benefits for it there in Eufaula. We had uh, over 2,209 people that were, that were helped, and they performed over 7,000 procedures. And it affected not only the city of Eufaula and Barber County, but probably five or six counties because we have people coming in from, from all over that area to get help. So uh, uh, I appreciate uh, what, 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 what these folks do here because uh, without them, uh, it'd be hard for us to do a lot. So thank you. Next is Mary Patterson from the University of Alabama, and she's going to discuss her project, which is an entrepreneurial research network project. She also has Dr. Addy over there, and so we need to make sure. Come on up, Mary. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited about our project. We are an outreach division of the University of Alabama's Culver House College of Commerce. And we partner with uh, uh, business-centric organizations in rural Alabama, in uh, those rural counties where the unemployment and the um, poverty rates are higher than the national average. And my project is training and innovating Delta entrepreneurs. And um, with this project, we hope to augment and um, improve the existing entrepreneurial centers that we have already set up in 13 Delta counties, and in addition, we want to add seven, the seven remaining Delta counties that are not a part of our network. This project will allow us to add those counties, and those are Barber, Bullock, Clark, Conecuh, Escambia, Lowndes, Russell, and um, we are very excited about being able to add those counties. You know, we have a lot of great entrepreneurs in the state of Alabama with some great ideas, and we just need to connect those entrepreneurs to the resources. And that's what we do at the University of Alabama. We bring the resources from the University of Alabama down to the community level. And um, with this project, we will be uh, uh, identifying some partners, maybe some business incubators that we can partner with and um, sponsor some workshops, seminars, um, training for entrepreneurs in these rural areas so that we will be able to um, have a pipeline of entrepreneurs to participate in the Delta Challenge. And um, it's a project that I have a great passion for, I'm very excited about, and, um, and I appreciate so much uh, the, uh, the funding, and I appreciate uh, Governor Bentley, uh, Chairman Massengill, and Director Byard. I appreciate your vision and your commitment to uh, entrepreneurship, to innovation and to small business in Alabama. And I believe that with your leadership that we can be, the South can actually be the next Silicon Valley. So I'm very excited and thank you so much. 
Jennifer reminded me I was supposed to be telling y'all how much these projects were. Uh, Mayor Tibbs is about a $50,000 investment, a DRA investment. Uh, Mary's a $100,000 investment. And then our next project is the iSpice uh, building renovation in the city of Jackson. And Mayor Long ran in here just a minute ago. Mayor, we, I, you weren't here when I said one minute. And I know that's very difficult for you, Mayor. One minute. $206,000. Come on, Mayor, and tell us about the iSpice project. <laughs> you won't believe where I was at 4 o'clock this morning. I was getting out of bed, going to the car to leave Nashville. And I can tell you one thing, Alabama is booming because I've never seen so much traffic between here and Nashville. <laughs> but I want to tell you about, we, we have to, uh, on the iSpice food program, we have to tell everybody, we'll justify real quick what spice is. I spice foods. And uh, they said, that's great. And I was wondering about that. Uh, Jesse Quillen, stand up economic developer for the city of Jackson, Alabama. He's been very involved in this project. Uh, it was a Vanity, Vanity Fair building. And when they left, we brought in New Era Cap Company. So did Demopolis. And when they left, it sat idle for like six years. And it's a big building. We put a lot of money into it. And so without the, without the help from these gentlemen behind me and, and uh, all the state agencies, not just one, all of them, we could not have done this project. We're going to employ about 125 people initially, and uh, the uh, CEO, the owner of the company, is already talking about building another building and doing something else. So, you know, I, I believe that when I see it, but we know we're going to have 125 jobs start up this year before the end of the year, and we're just excited as we can be, in, and I'll say it again, I want to appreciate the, the board and the board people, and my friend Jim Baird, you know, met one on a plane to some meeting out somewhere, and I didn't think he was old enough to be a mayor. <laughs> He's okay. better than the governor. Nothing's official to the governor. Signs. 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 Well, no doubt. I hope you <laughs> <laughs> Our next project, you know, you get the flavor. Some of these are, you got some hotel, you got some infrastructure. Our next one is a, it's infrastructure and it's job training. It's the Demopolis Truck Driving School. And I'd invite Diane Brooker, who's the chairman of the ID board in Marengo County to come up and speak. $150,000. Yes, I am the chairman of the Demopolis Industrial Development Development Board, and I want to thank the governor and Chairman Massengale so much for giving us this $150,000 grant. We actually have truck driving school through Shelton State in Demopolis at our old New Era building. Unfortunately, the federal uh, regulations for a driving range changed, and so we had to look forward to find how can we keep Shelton State here. Because truck driving, skilled truck drivers are the number one job vacancy facing our industries in Marengo County and the surrounding area, as well as the entire state of Alabama as the nation. And so as the chairman of IDV, I wanted to make sure that we were able to keep Shelton State in Demopolis. And so the Demopolis Industrial Development Board have given Shelton State six acres of property. And with the help of the Governor's Office of Workforce Development and from DRA, we will now be able to break ground and keep Shelton State and Demopolis and keep those jobs there. Thank you. Next is a transportation program in Alabama's, uh, in Alabama's Black Belt, several counties in the Alabama Tom Beebe Regional Council area. And I would ask John Clyde Riggs to come up. This is a $38,000 award. Good morning to you. Uh, on behalf of the people of the Alabama Tom Beebe Regional Commission District, I want to thank Governor Bentley and Chairman Massengill and Jim Byard for this grant. This grant will enable us to purchase four new vans using it as the matching funds. Uh, if, if any of you are familiar with the rural part of Alabama, and especially the Black Belt, transportation is one of the huge impediments in our area. We will run a rural transportation program. These vans will be used to take people to and from work, to and from job training, and provide other public transportation. Uh, it's valuable to us in, in rural Alabama to be able to do this. 
I'd be remiss if I didn't also say to our 10 counties or 10 of the 20 Delta Regional Authority counties in Alabama, it's incredible how much the DRA has meant to our area. We have had industries locate because of the DRA funds and, and the relationship between the state, Jim, you and the governor, and Chris Massengill and DRA is strong. And uh, Chairman Massengill mentioned our senators and our representatives, they support the Delta Regional Authority across party lines and they ensure that it is funded every year. That's important. And that's an important thing we need to leave here today with is encouraging our representatives and our senators to support the additional funding of DRA. They're not even receiving all of the funding that was allocated to them. And, and so that's an important thing that we need to do. If nothing else, when we leave today, if we can take that with us to town meetings and to uh, times that our representatives come home from Washington, we need to continue to beat that drum. Thank y'all very much. Our next project addresses a welding shortage in South Alabama. And welding is a, a you know, goes to show that it's different areas of our state truck driving in Marengo County, welding in South Alabama. It's a $150,000 welding uh, initiative that is going to go to the Jefferson Davis Community College. And we have the interim president of Jeff Davis, Dr. Bill Blow, here to tell us about that project. Thank you, Mr. Byer. First, let me thank all those who had a part in helping us secure this grant. Uh, I want to mention uh, Coastal Gateway. They're the ones that helped us put the grant together and did a fine job of that working with our faculty and staff. We certainly appreciate uh, the decision makers in this, uh, ADECA and uh, DRA, and we appreciate the governor's support for workforce development in Alabama, which is very well known. The project itself, of course, will enable us to do some much needed renovation on a warehouse building on our Atmore campus. We're just completely out of space for, for welding instruction. It'll also go a long way in helping us uh, uh, employ an additional welding instructor. We have two instructors, both are working themselves to death. One is in our prison education program with a, pro a welding program. The other is in the uh, a general population program. He works day and night, and I think we could double our enrollment almost overnight if we had the facilities and one more instructor. This grant will help us get there, and we do appreciate it very much, all the players in this. Thank you very much. I do have to mention that that is a true partnership. Uh, the mayor and several council members from Atmore are here, uh, and it, it is a true partnership. Our next project is over in Bullock County, uh, Wayne Farms. It's a road improvement project so they can expand $177,000. And Dr. Cope, Julian Cope, the economic developer for Bullock County is here. So let's speak. Thanks, Dr. Cope. Julian Cope, I'm very humble to uh, be here and I wanted to do it. My mother always told me to do is first say thank you. And I want to, I, I genuinely want to say thank you to Governor Bentley, Chris Massengale with uh, uh, Delta Regional, his staff, the governor's staff, Jim Byard and, and, and his staff. I want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank you. So why are you thanking? You know why I'm thanking them, but I want you to know too uh, that they have shown faith in us. You, you have expressed faith in, in us to. Uh, do something with the resources that you're giving us. And I noticed over the past uh, 10 months, we, we've created over 100 jobs, 110 jobs. That's not a lot in Montgomery, but it is in Bullock County. And uh, we're, we're thankful for that. And we're trying to do uh, our part there. And especially when the, the, the data shows that we have the lowest per capita income in the state. We're not proud of that, but we're trying to do, trying to do better. And uh, just the past week, the governor was involved, and Jim was involved in awarding an innovative award to one of our new entities, To Your Health. I saw his picture, we're going to put that in the Union Springs Herald, uh, <laughs> what, what we're going to do, so we're trying
try and, and we're, we want you to know that we are stabilizing and decreasing our unemployment rate. We've had one of the highest in the state. It looks like Wilcox County and I and Bullock County, we, we're competing. But we, we're, uh, we're not ranked uh, uh, number one, number two now. Uh, we, we're 20, which that's pretty good for us. We talked with uh, the Commission of Labor, Mr. Fitzgerald. We're looking at strategies. So, so we are uh, improving, and we are going to be, the, the current rate was 8.2, uh, which, which was better for us. So uh, <clears throat> we want to thank you. This funding that we're going to get, it's going to help our largest industry, Wayne Farms. All of you are familiar with Wayne Farms. It employs about 800 people. A lot of them from Bullock County, some from six counties. Very important to our economy, and this is going to uh, improve working conditions, uh, a new industrial access road, parking, a fence, and uh, the, the grant is, as Mr. Jim said, $177,916, and Wayne Farms is going to pay $12,438 in matching, and the, the Bullock County Development Authority will pay that equal amount. So uh, I just want to say that on behalf of the County, Bullock County Commission, their chairman, Ron Smith, who's not here today, uh, Commissioner Johnny Adams is here representing Mr. Smith, uh, the uh, Bullock County Development Authority, of which I'm a part, uh, our Planning Commission, uh, South Central Alabama Development Commission under the direction of Tyson Highwood, uh, we all say, Thank you for giving us an opportunity. Thank you, sir. We've got two more awards, and I, to be honest with you, I almost forgot one of them, and the Mayor Monroe would have dropped his teeth. Uh, it's the Hudson Branch Wastewater Treatment Plant Project's $155,000, and you know, truly, that's a foundation. If you don't have wastewater, you're not going to have community development. You're not going to have economic development. Mayor Kennedy from Monroeville. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, the city of Monroeville uh, was in need, or we're in need of a new retaining facility or retaining uh, retention facility, a retention pond at one of our uh, treatment plants, and uh, we, our ammonia levels were really, really high above the acceptable levels. Uh, we were under a consent order from ADEM, and uh, so we, uh, more or less, this all came about because of Vanity Fair uh, had a dining facility in Monroe, which uh, our wastewater treatment facility was a two million gallon per day facility. Uh, Vantage Fair used 90% of, of that capacity, so we're now currently working at about 10%, 200,000 uh, 200, gallons per day. And so that just changed the whole dynamics of, of, of our wastewater treatment facility. So that is what uh, this money is, is for, is to get that plant working like it should. But uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, Governor Bentley and Delta Regional Authority and AD for that. Thank you so much. Thank you, you know, Governor, I might say, and Mayor, you probably do not even know this, but Governor, last night, because we were dealing with such a critical time frame and emergency situation, I signed your notice to proceed last night on the way here on the plane, so you can go spend that money, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. And before I call our final project up, I do want to introduce our ADECA staff. It's very easy to stand up behind this podium, but I don't do any of this work. But we got a hardworking group of uh, men and women that work at us at that work for us at ADECA. And uh, I've got we've got our two DRA program staff, Al Jones and Jimmy Lester. Y'all stand up. Our uh, division chief, B. Fornes, and then our deputy director, Gina Smith, is there. So thank you guys. For, and we've got our two coaches. Our final award this morning is uh, $80,000 to the Pop Start Business Incubator in Extreme West Alabama in York. It goes to the Coleman Center for the Arts. And Elizabeth Gilder is coming up. And just an aside, Elizabeth's uh, father, Gil Gilder, is an ADECA retiree. He is a, we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us, and he's one of the men that ADECA stands uh, on their shoulders. So, Elizabeth. Hello, how are you? 
sorry, y'all. Um, I'm from the Coleman Center for the Arts, and our project is Pop Start. It's a business incubator in downtown New York. And the Coleman Center very simply saw a need for support for small business development in downtown New York and in Sumter County, and so that's what we aim to provide. Um, we want to thank the Delta Regional Authority and the Governor's Office. Um, this is going to go a long way towards um, supporting our community and uh, promoting business entrepreneurship in New York and Sumter County. Well, as you see, uh, there are tremendous uh, variations of uh, grants that's uh, helping the uh, area of the state that, that truly needs some help. A uh, thousand jobs is very significant for this area of the state. And I'm very proud to be a, a part of this today. And Chris Massengale, it's uh, always uh, good to work with you. I've worked with you in the past. I, I think I'm going to work with you in the future. I hope so. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, so it's, it's an honor to have you with us here in Alabama and Jim Byard and his staff who have done just a tremendous job. Thank y'all for all y'all do. Uh, we're all trying to help create jobs and try to help the people of this great state. All those who have received an award uh, today, congratulations. Uh, y'all do a great job in your cities and your counties and, and I just want y'all to know how much I appreciate y'all. And so, uh, I, as, as, as was mentioned, uh, 100 jobs in Bullock County is, is like uh, 10,000 jobs in Huntsville. So uh, we always have to remember where jobs are created and how it affects the surrounding areas. Uh, and to, uh, to, be, to go from one of the top unemployment counties in the state of Alabama, Bullock County, to now rank 20th, uh, it, just with the few jobs that have been added, that's significant. So we need to continue to work in these areas of the state, uh, continue to help these, uh, and, and we have been doing that. I have tried to make a, a special effort uh, from our administration uh, to try to help the Black Belt. We're going to continue to do that. So thank you all for coming today, and again, uh, thank you all for uh, being a part of this program. Thank you.